to my talk about um, how to simplify copyright using SPDX IDs. Um, I'm Stefan Lachnitz. I'm a contributor to Debian. I maintain with Jonathan Carter and the games team, for example, the game mode package. So what is the SPDX? So the SPDX is the software package data exchange. Um, it's a working group of the Linux Foundation and the most important thing they do is they maintain a list of yeah, common licenses. So yeah, this is a part of the list. This is pretty long. And as you can see, um, you have yeah, a lot of licenses and they all have a short identifier. So yeah, that's the middle column here. So for example, um, for the um, academic free license, that would be AFL. And you also um, yeah, can read the full license text, the default license header, um, and they also have a column whether the uh, license is approved um, from the FSF, or more interesting, um, in the case of Debian, from the open source initiative. So why would one use these identifiers? So first of all, they're short. So saying I have the AFL, or writing it is shorter than um, writing the full name of the license. They're also standardized, so it's pretty much clear. Like a common problem is like, oh, it's a BSD license, but there are like several BSD license. And so if you use these identifiers, it's exactly clear to which license you're referring to. And also they're easy to parse. So um, in the case of the GPL, you have like a pretty long um, header for files. And with the SPDX um, license identifiers, that will be shortened to just um, you have one line basically, um, as you can see, like with the examples. Also, um, it's possible to state like several licenses. So, for example, um, I've written down MIT or FSFAP. So that's also pretty easy to parse if you have uh, multiple licenses. So, next question is. Um, why we want to use them in Debian? Well, we have the DP5, um, which is the, the copyright format, uh, the machine readable. Um, but it would be much more um, readable for both machines and humans if instead of writing basically all license text, there are only a couple of licenses um, stored on the Debian systems like the GPL. Um, but having more of it um, yeah, standardized um, is easier to read for humans because it's shorter and for machines as well. And it also shortens the um, copyright file um, in yeah, some cases pretty dramatically. And if you would use um, SPDX identifiers um, for um, the, the copyright file, we can also, um, when creating a package uh, with uh, dhmake, we can simply um, check for file headers um, with an SPDX um, identifier, which is pretty easy to parse as we've seen before. Uh, we can also automatically fill in that copyright file, so that would be easier for maintainers. And we can also um, automatically check if a package is CFSG compliant or not if it only has SPDX licenses because we know which licenses are DFSG compliant um, and which not so that would also be um, yeah pretty helpful I guess um, also we could make more precise statistics about license usage uh, because the um, name or the identifiers um, are yeah, like standardized. And it also will remove some clutter. So right now you have the license assignment um, to the file, so which file has which license in the same file with the license text. But if we would split these in two files, so license texts and just yeah, like, like the assignments, that would be, at least in my opinion, I think a little bit cleaner and yeah, removes a little bit of the clutter. So how would it look? <laughs> well, this is an example of a manga hood 
and it's more like a worst case example here so this is a part of the copyright file that's a little bit longer um, and as you see like in the beginning yeah the normal file assignments but if you go down you have like four licenses and it's not really I don't think it's nice to look at um, and yeah with SPDX <laughs> identifiers it would simply look like this so nothing really changed I <laughs> simply cut the picture um, but you get the idea so how would one um, could one implement it um, actually in the standard so um, I thought of like three new identifiers um, entries um, one would be like license minus SPDX so after this so if look back like instead of writing like license uh, MIT we would write um, license minus SPDX MIT if um, there is a license um, which is not collected by the SPDX um, license list we would store them in a separate file or um, um, something I'm not really sure if it's that useful but like for a very short license maybe license minus text so as you can see um, below some examples um, how it would look like with SPDX um, or with a file So also um, this is um, pretty uh, helpful for non-free packages as well, I think, uh, at least for some. So um, if we have there some, so the um, SPDX licenses, they're not all um, free um, according to the DFSG. So some of them, um, yeah, we might not want on the system, but if we have um, a package which still uses them, that could still be in non-free, and what we can do is um, automatically depend on a package which contains all the non-free SPDX licenses and automatically depend on it with Dev Helper. So that would be pretty neat as well. So now to the more interesting part, what is the current state of the SPDX uh, or of SPDX adaptation in Debian? So with the DEP5, it's actually pretty close. Um, a lot of the things so a lot of people um, write GPL minus 3 plus or something like this this is actually um, from the SPDX uh, version 2 standard um, and there is a wiki entry which um, collects like the biggest differences between current practices with DP5 and SPDX identifiers but the wiki page is pretty much outdated or a, a lot of stuff is outdated and um, yeah that's not really much progress um, at least I don't see anyone working on this really but um, one thing that is nice is that the SPDX license package uh, is a new um, I think it entered new four months ago or something like this but um, that's it so um, I haven't seen any initiative uh, for um, a change of the p 5 so yeah this is where the discussion part comes in so the talk is basically over now is the part where um, I want to discuss um, how one could implement it maybe um, reasons not to implement it maybe I've overlooked something but I think uh, it would be pretty neat if Debian would adopt this standard so in the hyper um, yeah, in the theoretical case that Debian would adopt it um, what it like the main things that would need to be done. So first of all, the SPDX releases versions of um, the license list. I think the current version is um, 3.10. So if we write up a standard, we should um, write in that standard to which SPDX version we're referring to, or at least the base version. So I think if they add new um, minor versions, they won't remove or rename licenses. Um, they only would add some, but on major uh, versions they might remove or um, rename licenses. But yeah, so for example, one could say for the bullseye cycle, let's take version 3.10 and write it in the standard. Then obviously, the um, yeah license packages would um, need to get in. Uh, the licenses would need to get into Debian somehow, and uh, the standard needs to be written. 
um, a proper standard and then Lintian would need to be updated to yeah, um, able to pass that new copyright format and they pop as well uh, for the non-free um, stuff I talked about earlier and then later, not that important, one could add fancy parses like the automatic um, checking um, or um, uh, checking against file headers and stuff like this. So yeah, um, thanks for listening. Um, here's some credits um, for this super nice template and yeah, uh, let's start discussing. Thanks a lot for your talk, Stefan, and welcome to DEF CONF. Now we have a couple of minutes for some questions. And the first one is, what has been the hardest thing about SPDX until now for you? Um, I don't know if I get the question uh, right. I think um, the hardest thing about it is, um, I think, uh, when one tries to implement it, um, is the sheer size of the license list is pretty big. So each license kind of has to be grouped between free and non-free, uh, which is a lot of work, but someone already did it. Um, I actually don't know the name. I just saw it randomly in new. Um, yeah, so that's the hardest part. Um, yeah, because there's, I don't know, it's like 100 licenses, I think. And not all of them, like in the talk, I said they have like these OSI approved um, a column, but not all of them are actually approved. And I think some of them are actually um, still DFG, uh, DFSG compliant. Right. Um, the second question, why not indicate the used SPDX version in the copyright file? Yeah, I also um, thought about this. This is probably a very good idea. Um, to just set like in the beginning um, uh, a little header, but um, I still think um, a base version is a good idea because um, you uh, um, it only really makes sense to um, give in the wor a newer version when um, the version is also in Debian. So it would be kind of um, yeah, it wouldn't be a good idea to say, okay, I use SPDX, whatever, 3.10, but in Debian, we only have 3.7. So um, the whole point is like off because you're missing the license text, which you actually need um, to comply um, with the copyright. Yeah, so I think it would be um, a good idea to like for the cycle to set a version and um, one could still say, okay, if you want to use a new SPDX version, then you can add the spheres and make it optional. But yeah, that's a, a, that's a really good point. I also think um, that would be a good idea, but optionally. Wonderful. Thanks a lot for your answers and for this great talk. Thanks for sharing about SPDX. Yeah, thanks. 